Now normally in a proton NMR, there will be a few zones I look at. So the first part is from 0 to about 1.5 ppm. They are the alkanes, the saturated ones. And from 1.5 to 2.5, that will be the allylic kind of hydrogen. Allylic means you must have a CC double bond. And the next carbon that connects it, it is the allylic position. Next, from 2.5 to 4.5, I will see whether there are signals here. They could represent that the surrounding will have electron withdrawing elements such as oxygen, nitrogen, and halogen. And the next frame will be from 4.5 to 6.5. This is where your vinylic group is. Again, your CC double bond must be present and the first position that joins to this carbon with a double bond, it is a vinyl position. And the next one will be from 6.5 to about 8. This is a zone for your aromatic substances, the one with benzene ring, the phenyl groups. Okay, in the correlation table for NMR, again, do not memorize it, just refer when necessary. Okay? But you should know uh, using what you have learned that if I have an oxygen closer to the hydrogen, compared with one that doesn't have the oxygen close to it, the one with oxygen close to it should have a higher chemical shift. Make sense? Now, the chemical shift differences. In an ester, in this case, we have a methyl ethanoic ester. Smells quite good. We see that there are two kinds of environment here, right? The three green protons are the same because they all join to the same carbon, so they appear as one signal. And the other side, the three protons connected to the other carbon will also be equivalent. But these two are not the same because if you go step by step, see this carbon here connects to an O whereas the other carbon here connects to C. So that's how you tell they're different. When they're different, they do not fall into the same peak, but separately, and you see two peaks here. Now, in another ester, right, this is another ester you can recognize by this COOC bond here, we notice that these nine protons in green, they are identical. Why? Okay, we know that these three are the same, these three are the same, and that three are the same. And how do we know that these nine are the same? Now take a look, the carbon that this hydrogen connects to connect to the same carbon, so you go stepwise, you see, one step at a time, and if they matches to the same atom, oh, they are the same. So we know that none of them are the same, and in the other case, the pink one, three of them are the same. So we see two signals, the nine and the three. So the ratio between these two types of protons will be 3 is to 1 as the simplest ratio. So you see this peak here? We will have the integration line. What we call that? These lines here that's being generated by the program. You always count from here. So you extend using a piece of ruler. Draw a, a horizontal line. Here the same thing, horizontal line. Measure the length. You should get a ratio of 9 is to 3, which is 3 is to 1 in terms of the height. So this is another clue to tell you the number of the protons with respect to the other environments. Now next thing is the splitting pattern. So this is about the signal, how many finer peaks does it evolve into. So just now we talk about signals. We have two signals, but then for those two previously, they were all singlet. No singlet. I'm not wearing it right now. But in the case here, take a look. This peak, if you blow it up, you see that, hey, this is actually a twin peak, right? So this is one signal, but somewhat, somehow, it has become a two fine lines. Two fine lines we call a doublet. Now, for here, we blow up for you. This is, this consists of seven lines. So seven is sept, septet. So why is that so? I will help you analyze it. If you are given a chemical formula of a molecule, such as this molecule here called butane, you should be able to see instantly how many chemical environments are there for this molecule. So there should be one and two, the one in red and in blue. Same thing for ethyl bromide, you should be able to see there are two different kinds of protons. Now the splitting, how do we understand the splitting? How many fine lines does it split into? Very easy. It goes by the n plus one rule, where n it is a total number of the neighboring proton. 
when we talk about neighboring proton, we talk about the proton that is one carbon away. So let's take a look at eta bromide. For the signal of this pink colored proton, what happens is we look at the carbon that this pink proton connects to. The first carbon that this connects to has how many protons? Oh, three. So for this guy, signal will be three plus one, you get four. So for the pink color signal, it should be a four fine lines. You see a quartet. And likewise, for the blue signal, blue protons here, the first carbon that the carbon it connects to joins to is only one. And that guy has two protons. So two plus one is three. Triplet. Got it? And this follows the Pascal's triangle. Right. Singlet, double, triplet, got that. Quintet, septet. What is this? The intensity of the fine lines here. So 1, 3, 3, 1. 1 is to 2 is to 1. For doublet, it's 1 is to 1. Reminds you of binomial theorem. Now, so the n plus 1 rule, we can practice again. In this propyl, in fact, it's isopropyl bromide, we will see two signals. The one in pink, the one in blue. Now, for the pink signal, how many neighboring protons there are? 6. 6 plus 1, you get 7. Hence, you get a septet. And for these protons in blue, there's only one neighboring proton that's different from itself. So 1 plus 1 is 2. That's how we get doublet. You may ask, why are these blue protons the same, you know, on both sides? Because you can draw a symmetry line. Like I said already before, the metal groups connect to the same carbon. So they are indeed the same. Now, when we try to interpret the NMR spectrum of a known compound, something just to verify, right, to check make sure it's there, we first have to recognize the proton environment, the types of proton, using chemical shift, the regions around it, and the integration of peaks, the number of protons in that particular environment. So, the number gives you the ratio. Remember, 3 to 1 could mean 6 is to 2, could mean 9 to 3. So there can never be a that small a fraction of a proton because I can't cut up an atom into half, into a quarter, no. Okay? And the third information that you got to do is to decipher the splitting pattern. So this gives you a clue about the number of it, uh, neighboring protons surrounding it. So how do we assign the chemical structure to a given NMR spectrum? Let's say it is unknown, right? So we measure the line here, the length between here, there and this part here okay so we know that the ratio between the protons will be 3 is to 2 is to 6 and there's a the one here don't forget huh? and this is your signal for the hydrogen in the alcohol group NMR spectrum for the 2 metal proton 2 law so you might ask hmm can I tell just by the integration line which peak belongs to which of this proton yes I could because for this six of them Pink color one, there's six, six times. For the green, two of them. For the blue, three of them. So you can tell that here, you see, there's the longest. Should be about six is two, three is two. If you measure it using a piece of ruler on your slides, you get that, or approximately so.